The following is a Galactic Network podcast. For more, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com. The Podcast of Terror is a great podcast. It's covering movies that are not for children, and thus this podcast is not for children. The hosts are two adults who will use bad words from time to time. They'll also spoil movies if that's not your thing. So if you don't like spoilers and you don't want to hear some dirty language or some dirty references to dirty parts of your body, then please, please, please wash your body parts better and do not listen to this show. If you can handle it, and I hope you can because there's a great podcast coming up, then please proceed with Podcast of Terror. Corey, I couldn't help but notice that you're wearing a shirt. I try to whenever possible. Uh, there were laws passed. What are the odds that you wear a shirt every day of your life? Almost forty percent. At a boy. Well, let me let me tell you about a little uh, sales bonanza we got going here. We got some friends. These uh, these friends got some codes. Go visit our friends uh, at the Hate. That's the. If you can't spell the, go back to school. Hate H V I I I dot com. Use the code H B G fifteen get fifteen percent off your order. And if your tits still require more fabric. Go to status. I need to double up. You got to double, double. You never have too much tit fabric. Go to statusforyourmerch.com, use the code TERROR, and, uh, and get you some sweet discounts there. Episode 98 of the Podcast and Era production of the Galactic Network. I'm your host, Matt Stein. With me, as always, is Corey. I work in IT, but I don't know how to refresh a web page. Scott, Corey, how are you? <laughs> I keep hitting the button, and it just doesn't do anything. I also tried to do the same thing for my armpits. What? I don't you, know. you don't use deodorant? You just push the refresh button on I your armpit? I just refresh every just day. Refresh. Renews it. Oh, that's a good one. For more on this podcast, including show notes, contact information, subscription links, you can go to gncast.com slash pot. I always get foamy mouth talking. I hate the corners. Talk so fast. Uh, that's because I hate reading things and I hate saying things that are mundane and kind of like where people can easily get lost. So I try and speed through it. Well, switch it up. Do it as a limerick. That No, I, not today. <laughs> like 575 this could take a long time uh you can chat with us on our slide channel at our uh gncast.com slash sign up uh, we sometimes do that during shows but no one loves us while you're there you can subscribe to our newsletter as well this week uh we're going to talk about salem's lot a little later or as i like to call it salem's plop <laughs> i actually didn't think it was that bad but i thought that was a funny that was a funny little doohickey um, before we go ahead and start talking about our news, hey, Corey, what you drinking? I made a special drink yesterday when I thought we were recording, and then we didn't. It's my fault. So I had to make another one today. It's not really your fault. You you told me I'm just terrible at remembering shit. I just as soon uh, you remember. Yeah, that's, you put way too much hope on me. Uh, I am drinking what I like to call a Temerity Tang, because you have to name shit, uh, especially after yourself. And... Uh, it is a very simple recipe. It is orange sherbet mixed with Mountain Dew. Uh, done up like a little bit. Of, it started out as a root beer float, but then I mix it all together and it becomes more like a milkshake. It's terrific. And then you add the semen of a virile boy. That's to implied. Give it, to give it that little extra nighttime zip. A little wang to your tang? A little wang to my tang. Yeah, so uh, as Corey mentioned, we were supposed to record yesterday. I forgot to remind him. I was out in Minnesota at uh, a music festival in a parking lot. And every year, never fails. I never put on sunscreen. Now, I'm going to see if I can do this without hurting myself, Corey. <laughs> you, fucking, you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my fucking bright red shoulder. So... Like a month ago, I got all sunburned when I went and I played croquet that one day, uh, as you what? recall. <laughs> yeah, it, for my friend's birthday, I'm pretty, pretty sure we talked about this. I was all burnt red and shit. Yeah. I'm still peeling on my arms. I'm There's still like a, just a total bit of, of just skin rash. I look fantastic. Like I, if There's not enough reasons to avoid the fat, sweaty, hairy man. Uh, have him, have him standing there with skin flaking off at you like some got a little bit of Corey jerky. Yeah, mm. could be worse. Tasty. Yeah, I walked outside and 
the sun hit my shirt, which then, you know, heated up my skin, which burnt. <laughs> I just yeah. can't win. I am not smart. Um, wow. Tang. I got uh, something special other than a, a hair in my nose that's tickling right now. Um, I picked, I actually found it today, earlier today. It's uh, Stone Brewing's Woot Stout. It's actually called a Stone Farking Wheaton. Some collaboration beer that they did with Will Wheaton, Greg Cock. I assume that's not how you say his name, but I'm calling him Cock anyways. And uh, Drew Curtis. It's an Imperial Stout. Brewed with pecans, wheat, and rye, and then one quarter was aged in bourbon barrels. So, we'll probably be drunk in 10 minutes. Pecans, actually. That sounds delightful. There's the about more often with nuts. There was one I was at the store today. The guys tell me about how they have a beer that was made with real peanuts instead of fake peanut butter flavor. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, well, all right. You seem very impressed with yourselves. <laughs> just, 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 we finally used the real thing instead of just the flavor of the thing. It's a beer you can throw at small kids and watch them implode because they're all allergic to it now. Well, so is my wife. She looks like a little kid, though, so I guess it works. What? Have you ever seen a picture of my wife? She uh, looks, she looks not very, in a way that I predicted that she was a child. It's... No, 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 no. She, um, uh, she's been carded for rated R movies, and she's like six months younger than me. Yeah, that's okay. She that's actually a lot. that's a good thing to do. Yeah, it'll come in handy with her alabaster skin and her ability to look fourteen well into her thirties. <laughs> it'll come in handy for you to just spend a lot of nights in prison. <laughs> after the third time i had to explain to the police that my wife was not 14 it got a little old you are in wisconsin it seems like it's not really that big of a deal out there i wouldn't know it's 15 below and everybody needs something to cuddle that's true if it's if it's warm and wet you put your dick in it mm. i've run a lot of good stews that way oh I guess we should talk about news instead of day. Ah, never mind. One more quick story. So yesterday, I uh, I, I went to uh, Warp Tour with, with Brad, who does uh, did our logo and is our Statusphere um, sponsor. And then uh, uh, my friend Dan, who's the drummer for Reaping Esmodee, and his girlfriend. And I think we were all in a car for a matter of five minutes, and we were talking about each other's buttholes. I, just I feel like we tell have... you about talking about uh, my friend's buttholes. It doesn't seem to similar from the conversations that you and I had with uh, with Travis. When we oh all no, not at all. City. Yeah, not at all. Um, apparently, when you hang out with me, you go zero to butthole real fast. I'm so wondering if he made that omelet for his girlfriend. I don't know. I texted him and he did not respond. He's busy with doing a new band or something or taking dog pictures. Life on the star. Go inside. <laughs> uh, let's do some fucking news. Um, David Cronenberg's novel Consumed is going to be developed as a TV series. A TV series um, by Dave Erickson. Oh. Fuck you, Siri. Sorry, <laughs> bitch. bitch. Shut up, bitch. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just got in an argument with my phone. Um, it's yeah, not like it's either it, of you can really win in that situation. No, keep beeping and. <sighs> um, uh, yeah, the the TV series is being you. developed uh, by Fear the Walking Dead's Dave Erickson and Lucifer's Sherry Elwood at AMC, uh, which makes sense because they're the ones who do Fear the Walking Dead, and no one really wants to take credit for Lucifer. Why so, does, why does wait, 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 what what is Lucifer? Why does it sound familiar? Lucifer is a Fox series based off of um, I think it's Mike, uh, Mike Carey's. Vertigo series for DC Comics. Oh. It, it was the character that started out in Neil Gaiman's Sandman and then got his own oh. spin-off series for a number of years and then they turned it into a procedural on Fox. It's not a bad show at all. It, it's it's reasonably enjoyable. The lead is very good in the part and and it's all fine, but it is like god damn it, it's it's another fucking procedural. This is not that. Oh wait, maybe it sort of is. Uh, so Erickson and Elwood will pen the adaptation uh, and show run. Consumed is described as a mind-bending psychological thriller that follows two journalists who set out to solve the cannibalistic murder of a controversial Parisian philosopher. Mm -hmm. It was published in 2014 by Charles Schreiber's Sons. 
they will executive produce with Cronenberg, who may also direct. Uh, Cronenberg's longtime collaborator, Robert Lantos of Serendipity Point, uh, which produced Eastern Provinces, will also executive produce. So, yeah, you were worried when you heard the, the title that it was another goddamn Just, zombie thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I could absolutely see why, and that would not be great. Although Cronenberg doing it would at least be interesting. Cronenberg brings a lot of cool stuff to the table, so to speak, as I talk about cannibalism. But at least it's <laughs> at least it's something else. I, I don't know then if it's a if it's a mini series or if it's something that can really continue on past the first season if it if they solve it. Like I don't know. Uh, much like prison break. They got out of the prison after the first season, yet there's five more seasons. Yeah, oh, god damn. That you was can always, you can always find a way to keep it going. That was rough. I know. Yeah. I I gave up halfway through the latest season. Um, I don't even know. If you I didn't that. even come back for it. I couldn't even do it. I I could not feign an interest. And and I I really liked Prison Break for the first season and a half, but it was that second half that, or that first half of that season that I was just like, God damn, this is. Are they? Are they? Do we just get a win now? Do, do they go back? <laughs> there's there's no prison. There's no prison anymore, and the tattoos make no sense. So no. we were just. It's it seemed like a lot of effort to just crawl through a shithole. Uh, it, it could have been done by now. Uh, did you ever? Did you watch? Were you into Twenty Four ever? No, no, I never really caught it. Because I, I never watched Twenty Four, but I watched Prison Break, and I know a lot of people who watch Twenty Four, but not Prison Break. Yeah, if if I want, who's who's leading Twenty Four? Uh, I want to say Kevin Bacon, but it's not Kevin Bacon. It's not Kevin Bacon. It's Kiefer Sutherland. If I want oh, Kiefer Sutherland to, to whisper at, whisper at me all intently, I'll just hang out at men's restrooms at bars. I got I got nothing. Yeah, neither does he. That's oh. why he's so intense. Well, he's got he's got plenty of money from the fucking Twenty Four. Yeah, he's he's a he's a very cool guy. Actually, I've always liked him. Oh, I like his dad. I like Donald Sutherland. Who the hell is that? Uh, Kiefer's dad. Well, I gathered. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The oh, makes. yeah. I never uh, knew that was his dad. Animal House. Yeah, Donald Sutherland, badass. Said, "How did you miss that?" Uh, because I'm not very perceptive. That's okay. We we but, forgive you. Wait, wait, wait. Kiefer Sutherland has a rabbit. <laughs> I really don't even know what that story is supposed to lead to. Actually, is it a vibrator? Yeah. Ke- no, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Kiefer Sutherland with rock and rabbit. Oh, it's like a stuffed rabbit. <sighs> Here, I thought he was a real man. He had like a pet rabbit. No, he he went over to the set of Greg the Bunny when it was on Fox as well, and he stole it away. Oh, and Seth Green's been pissed off at him ever since. Wow. Sarah Silverman shouldn't give a shit but hey so uh Cronenberg tv series that's weird <laughs> ain't that weird uh do, I, do you want to keep talking about this or not no we can move along oh, yeah, i say i really don't have much to say um todd mcfarland has announced a partnership with bloom house to produce an r-rated spawn movie which i'm like i got like half chub for because i was really i remember being really excited for the original um, when I was a kid and it just being like kind of shitty. So I'm hoping that a, uh, uh, an R rated remake would be chest X. So I, I saved my wife's life last night because, uh, in, in the midst of thinking that we were going to be recording the show, I was in my office. You want to remind me one office. more time uh, about our poor, uh, communication skills. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, you owe me, but, uh, I walk out of my office and and she's cooking and we had made fajitas on Friday night, uh, chicken fajitas, Ooh. Uh, fajitas, and 10, chicken fajitas. Yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, fajitas, that's great. I walk into the kitchen and I'm like, so did you go buy more chicken? She said, no. I said, well, I used the last of the chicken that I had bought on Friday earlier today when I made teriyaki chicken and rice so whatever you're cooking with is going to kill you because we did not buy chicken 
since that point and and the, the last time we'd had it was like a week or so before so she had cooked an entire thing of chicken that was very old hmm. and was in the midst of like she had tortillas down she had sour cream on them she was just about to plate and eat so it's it's good that i walked out of here when i did the reason i'm telling you that is because what it what it meant was that i had to go buy my wife olive garden and, and bring it home for her. well how did we get from a spawn remake to olive garden because when i was at the olive garden oh oh there's still more okay i, I was wearing a a justice league t-shirt and the guy that i was picking up the food from commented on the shirt and we started talking about movies and we started to talk about spawn the, the spawn movie and everything we got a little bit into comic book news and everything i said yeah well todd mcfarlane has a new spawn movie coming out from bloom house and he was like that's amazing and he said he had just recently rewatched the 90s spawn and as bad as he remembers it being then he's like it's really not that bad now when you go back and rewatch it compared to what you think of what a shit pile it was actually it's okay and i think it's because we've had so many different superhero movies since that time mm -hmm. and they all should be much better than they were in the 90s and some of them really aren't yeah i uh i remember renting spawn on pay-per-view and like sitting down as a child i don't even know i don't know what year spawn even came out spawn. oh god it was 96 maybe 95? 97 so 97. i'm roughly 12 years old and i remember like making a nice dinner for myself to sit down and watch spawn was it vaginas it was not vaginas it was uh goose breast because wow. i had murdered a goose recently <laughs> with a gun i shot it it's a little goosey body I, i'm i'm both terribly impressed that you cook goose for yourself at 12 and and even more impressed that it's something that you killed to cook. That's that's amazing. I don't have that in me. My, um, my my mom's a hunter, and and I respect the hell out of her for it, even though it's not something that I would ever want to do, oh. let alone would I ever have the skill to do it. Um, but it it does as, as much as I'm like animal lover and 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 bleeding heart liberal. I <laughs> I do I do appreciate the fact that people who are going to kill and prepare their own food that that's a skill set. I, yeah, I haven't goose hunted in a long time. Um, I, used to, I I purely went to spend time with my grandpa. And when he got too old to walk into the... Because you like go into alpha, alpha fields and sit in a blind. Um, when he got too old to do that, I stopped going. And now I, yeah. I certainly want to go again. But um, and I also want to go deer hunting now because they just fucking sit in my backyard. But I would never hunt and kill anything without the the, the purpose of eating it. Yeah, and that's completely correct. Is yeah. I don't like the idea of hunting for sport, killing for sport. None of that stuff is cool unless it's man. But uh, <laughs> if you if you do hunt, then you have to then eat the animal. You have to yeah. use that stuff. You have to make sure it gets used. You don't want to just do it because hey, I got to kill something. What yeah. fun! Uh, I'm just a psycho. Just um, work your way down the line. In uh, Ashley in our chat asked if I had to clean the goose, and yes. I think the first year I went, um, I went like four years. And the first year, my grandpa did not make me carry the dead goose. The second year, he made me carry the goose, which is a very uncomfortable situation because when you pick it up by its head, the neck stretches out and you can feel it. So I got creeped out by that. And then the third and fourth year, I had to clean them, which is fucking terrible. Because you got to pluck all the feathers and then you got to like cut it apart, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, yeah. She she mentioned she cleaned, she cleaned a deer and uh, I totally want to go deer hunting, but it's like once I kill it, I don't know how to clean it. So I'd have my to, mom like, call someone over my, to clean my deer. My mom, when she got her first deer, brought it home and and wanted to do it all herself. So she gets it home, and uh, this is before she was sent by stepfather who who she definitely hunted with later on. Um, she hangs it up in the garage. Now, I am the teenager, and I am freaked out by this whole thing. I did volunteer to go help her, and she was really impressed that I would do that because, again, I ain't the one. But she wound up <laughs> bringing it inside and carving it at our kitchen table, Oof. our dining room table, 
uh, which, again, not even remotely close to okay with me, but I supported her and, and, and she did everything the first time herself. And then she knew that that was a one-time deal and it was never going to happen again. You leave it to the professionals, but it was very impressive. It was, it was one of those things that I respect the hell out of her for, for all that. But it, no, uh, anyways, <laughs> so speaking of things that are disgusting. Uh, yeah. So McFarland has been talking for a long time about wanting to do a new spawn, uh, which is weird because the, the spawn HBO series, the animated series was actually quite good. Uh, and I don't know that it was necessary to, to fix anything. The nineties movie I can see, okay, yeah, we did that. And, and it wasn't really what I wanted. So I'd like to go back and fix it. But the spawn TV series was actually great, but he, he's like, I want this to happen. It only costs like a million dollars. I've got a script written. He's been promising it for years. The one big holdup is that he wanted to direct it and he couldn't get people at Hollywood to let him have that kind of power. Bloomhouse were like, yeah, we got you. We're all for it. You know, and, and Bloomhouse, that makes sense because the kind of films that they make and where they came from, that they would be the ones to say, sure, let's do this. Let's just throw money at it like Netflix does. Like, we'll just throw money at a filmmaker and let them make their series or make the movie. And we'll just bookend it and and distribute it, and that's fine. So it's great that this is finally happening for him. It it'll just be interesting because he's not really directed anything other than music videos before for like Pearl Jam and Corn and Disturbed, you know, all relevant bands today. <laughs> so it's 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 been a while, anyways, and he hasn't really drawn Spawn in a long time. I don't think he's written Spawn in a long time. He's mostly running his business. He's making toys. He's, he's he's still very successful, and he's still doing stuff with Image, but you don't see him do a lot of the creative stuff anymore, and I don't know how much of it is that he's just been pouring into this and waiting for this to happen. But good. You know, Bloom has, has had hits with Get Out and Split and Insidious recently. They're all big things for them. This could be the next big thing from them. Hopefully. Ooh. I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like a properly done, a properly done spawn could be really good, but doing a properly done spawn at this point in the game may not make a, like a fucking difference because of the oversaturation of superhero and comic book movies. There is a lot of superhero movies or, or comic comic movies is one thing. Comics can really run such a large path through the genre that there's so many different things they could be but superhero movies things with capes things with powers that's that's very specific and when they were talking about dr strange coming out dr strange we were led to believe at one point one of the rumors was that it was going to be a horror movie uh, itself and then it really was nothing like that it was just basically like iron man with magic uh, which is fine. It was a, it was a good movie. It was fun, but it wasn't anything special. The New Mutants movie that's supposed to be coming out from Fox, the spinoff from their X Men stuff, is again being talked about as being a horror movie with mutants in it. I, I'm just waiting to see what's going to actually do that. This could be the real like no, this is a horror movie. It's dark, and gnarly, and gritty, according to McFarland's own words. Which, yeah, I mean, that's suitable towards Spawn. It certainly is the right character to use if you want to do that. Uh, we'll just have to see what he can do. Because I liked Spawn in the 90s. I, I enjoyed the comic. I enjoyed the people that were in the first movie. I liked John Leguizamo. So him playing the clown was seemingly a right choice until you saw it up on screen and you went, oh, this is not fantastic uh, but on the, paper it made sense the only thing i remember is his line about uh when he's saying his name and he calls himself the vibrator because i was 12 so i mean i still think it's funny but i thought it was yeah. funnier than i feel like it's like normally funny um something we should mention real quick because you said the 90s you were on 90s percentile this week i was i i today if you're watching this yesterday if you're listening to this the day it comes out. And it was fucking great. I listened to it while driving home. Very proud oh, of you. Thank you. Well, I mean, 
it, it's hard not to have a great show with Jack and Dan at the wheel. And just five solid minutes of comparing all the things that we've stolen with them. Yeah, a little bit of that. Absolutely a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, I regretted not making the the joke that I was going to steal that that episode's guest for our next episode, uh, since it was me. But... Oh, fuck. I forgot you were going to do that. <laughs> Son of I a know. bitch. I, I have such a great time listening to them as a fan. And and I know that they're friends, and I should be over it by now, but I'm really not. They're, oh, they're just... I'm the same exact way. They're and, a blast. And Jack has a potty mouth. Yeah, Jack, Jack, well, he's not the only one. It's just that no, he got singled out by my by my poor, poor father uh, who's listening to this in the car with me. And it's like, why are you playing this? This guy just says fuck all the time. I'm like, yeah. Which is funny because I assumed when that conversation started that it was going to be me that he said swears too much. But Yeah, and it, it could have been I, on a normal day. <laughs> that's true. I, I guess when I'm with when it's Jack and I, I swear less. You have a tendency to let Jack take the wheel. <laughs> Jackie, take the wheel. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, so Spawn, Bloomhouse. No, let's, let's just R-rated. talk about Jack and Dan for the next 40 minutes. We absolutely could. The podcast of Jack and Dan. Uh, that would be such a better show. That would be weird and but, uncomfortable. <laughs> speaking of weird and uncomfortable shows, The Walking Dead is getting a robot chicken special. <sighs> Do you, do you feel like Robot Chicken is one of those things that maybe has already lived too long? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know it was still on. I don't know if it is either. It it may be that they just do specials every now and again. Because I remember a couple years ago they did the DC Superheroes Justice League one. But I I anytime I put it on, it seems like it's the same first three seasons of it that's playing. And I only put it on because it's it's playing in between episodes that I want to see of Rick and Morty or Venture Brothers or whatever. I I loved Robot Chicken in the first season, maybe the two, first two seasons. Yeah, it was definitely funny at first. And then it just seemed like it it hit the the simplest of jokes. It it kind of it's it's kind of like Family Guy. Like Family Guy mm-hmm. used to be super funny and then at some point they just gave up and there was that that time period of like but I'm still watching it because it used to be really funny and it could be really funny again. And then once in a while you see this little flicker of genius and then it just goes away really fast. And then of course you don't like the walking dead and I'm way over the walking dead. Yep. But at least it's not like they're doing something that's been done over and over again already. Like, no, they kind of started the over set or the, the, the over oversaturation, I guess the oversaturation of, uh, yeah, I want to say I almost said scarecrows. Oversaturation of zombies in uh, media. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It, it, if you like The Walking Dead, you'll probably enjoy the jokes that are that are in jokes for people who are fans. If you like Robot Chicken, well, you get more Robot Chicken. And there, there's certainly something to be said for the fact that they have put a lot in this show, and it has been at times very funny. Uh, it's just, I don't know. For me, it's a little bit more of the same, but I'm not their audience anymore, and I realize that. But if you are, yeah, rock on. Something to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, I mean, I, if you can still make a TV show like that, um, more power to you. You know what I mean? If you, and that's <clears throat> like The Simpsons and Family Guy still being shows, and there clearly is still an audience, which is why those shows still exist. And yes, I don't care for either of them as much as I did once did. Um, good, good for them. You know, <laughs> they get they get to do what they love to do. And I talk to like six people on the internet once a week. Yeah, and I I certainly don't begrudge Seth Green or Breckenmeyer or any of the people that are involved in either of these shows. Really, right? Their successes. It's it's not like I'm I'm just down on them because oh they sold out they because they. They rocked too hard and they got too close to the sun. No, they're, <laughs> they're absolutely talented people and, and people Man. that I, I like and admire and respect. I just, uh, I'm not as into the shows anymore. But I might check it out if it's on, you know, just like, hey, I'll, I'll see what it is and see if we can have a whole joke about like Glenn's dead. Oh, no, Glenn's alive again. Oh, no, Glenn's dead again. Oh, no, Glenn's alive again. Because I feel like that could be funny. See, I just watch live PD now. Yeah. <laughs> If you are not familiar with live PD, get learned. I have not watched it, 
you and my friend oh, Cal uh, are are the only people I know who watch it. But like, you guys are really into it. Well, it's fun. I love cops. Live PD I, is cops, but NFL Red Zone style. I can't watch either of those things. Why not? Well, for one, I was almost a cop. Really? Two, a lot of the people on cops, it hits a little close to home because I'm from Michigan. Uh, three, just in general, I, I don't, I don't like to watch things that are based around the lowest common denominator. Of that's why I don't like Howard Stern, as I just but don't want to watch celebrating the stupidest of stupid. That, and I feel sort of well, like that's what cops does. This, yeah, but this makes me feel better about my own life. That's why I watch Teen Mom. Yeah, and 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 again. I'm not judging you for for liking those things. I think you're judging me. I get where you're coming. From. No, it's well, just I, it's I can see it in your judgy like. eyes. No, my that's first of all, I'd be judging you with my penis because that's the <laughs> one you can't measure when you Stand up and drop trow. That's what I know. <laughs> right. Got it. Getting getting real. Just throw it down like the fucking obelisk at the beginning of 2000 and t- or 2001. Oh, no, I, I just it's wow. not for me, but I get why it's for you. My. One of my best friends. Are you calling Chris, me white trash right watches, now? A little bit, oh, but God. he watches. He watches that fucking trash television. He watches the Kardashians, or maybe oh, I don't know. I don't watch Kardashians, that. But he definitely watched Jersey Shore and all the real world stuff. And he loves watching the things because it lets him turn off his brain. He's an engineer, mm-hmm. super intelligent guy, and oh, this is how he's able to relax. And and it doesn't relax me because I'm I'm too into the fact of like, this is all fake and these people are driving me up the fucking wall and because I worked retail for a long time, it's like, I already have to deal with enough people's bullshit. His job is different. His viewpoint is different and he he gets something different from those shows. It's fine. I get it. I, teen Mom to me is like a car accident. I've, I've already said before that, you know, 16 and Pregnant is my show. I'm looking for 15 and Slutty. You know, I want the precursor to 16 and Pregnant. Oh man, I don't even know what to say to that. I feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, um, I was always a fan of. Hole. I was oh, I was always a fan of my super sweet sixteen. Kind of like yeah. Teen Mom. It's like, well, you're you're upset because your dad didn't buy you a car. Yeah, there's actually, um, I think it's Aziz Ansari does a skit about it where he's talking about how they have sixteen and pregnant, and then my super sweet sixteen, and he's like. This girl's complaining because she didn't get a car. And he goes, the, the people down the street are living in a car. <laughs> and then he made a joke about how Exhibit should show up at the end of uh, 16 and pregnant and like and raise the baby out. as their own. And be like, go back to being a teenager. I heard you like babies. So I put a baby in your baby. Uh, ooh. Oh, never mind. I spilled no, beer that's... all over me. <sighs> there was, wasn't there a, a Sweet 16, one of those things where they did like a a horror movie out of it the super sweet 16 they did a horror movie like a i want to say that they did like a movie of or maybe it was like yeah i thought it was they took the the premise of the show and then they did a horror movie mtv did it that just kind of like was the fictionalized version like the show's not already fake but i thought that they did i i could be off maybe i just thought it was a horror story uh, trying to watch it once but i watched big brother that's just it. I I not throwing dispersions at anybody because I watched there's, Big Brother. There's a, a movie called My Super Psycho Sweet Sixteen. Yes, that's it. But I think that's just a shitty movie. I don't think it's anything. Oh no, never mind. Wow. Network. Oh, well, it was an MTV movie. Wow. We have to do that for the show when we come back. Oh, we really have to. Yeah. You're the one who likes I, the show. I know. But it's like I don't telling you that there's there's a sequel to Santa's Slay, and you're going, but do we have to watch it? There's three of them. Oh shit! So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, well, we gotta we gotta watch them in order. Otherwise, how am I gonna keep up with the intricate plot? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna know who fucked whose boyfriend. <laughs> everybody, everybody, yeah. fucked everybody's boyfriend. Um. Oh, we gotta do this last news story, and then we gotta talk about the movie because in the movie, everyone's trying to fuck everybody. Oh yeah! Everybody, fuck everybody. Uh, the last news story we have: American McGee is uh, doing a Kickstarter for a card game called Out of the Hoods. Is it, is it Woods or Hoods? It, well, it's Woods, but Hoods. Oh, okay. You're just you're emphasizing the the wrong letter. It confused me because I thought it was like Leprechaun in the Hood. 
except with American Gigi and and well, that might be an expansion to the game. That should be an expansion. It's uh, uh it's actually a coming of age tale about a Ku Klux, a young Ku Klux Klan member who wants to get out out of the hood <laughs> and into your sweet sixteen. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it writes itself <laughs> and also gets its own government cheese. Uh, American McGee. Uh, for those who don't know, American McGee did a couple of video games based off of a very dark Alice in Wonderland, American McGee's, McGee's Alice and Alice Madness Returns. Uh, it had a very cool stylized look to it, was extremely 90s, was straight up uh, above the vampire slayer. In fact, I think Sarah Michelle Geller or maybe Elijah Dushku, somebody from Buffy was supposed to play Alice in a movie based off of a video game that just never happened. I don't know American McGee from anything else other than those two video games, but when you saw the name up at the opening of the game, it's like, wow, this guy's got to be big because this game looks so kick-ass. And it was it was a first-person, not exactly shooter, because she's running around with a knife and she's going through Wonderland and the creepily dark uh, version of it. But it was really cool. It, it was one of those things that it was probably more enjoyable to watch someone else play than to play yourself because I don't remember the gameplay being fantastic. That's it. He's just a game designer. Uh, I, I absolutely played the first one. It probably ran like shit because I think I had a, an old 386 or something that I was playing it on or maybe not quite that. Maybe it was a Pentium of some sort. Pentium 2. But Apple, as I Apple as I up systems down the years, I don't know that I ever picked it up again. I wonder if it's available through Steam. I don't know. I'll check real quick. Uh, but this is not a video game, which is kind of both disappointing and okay, I guess. Uh, it's it's a card game with the basic concept of Red Riding Hood, with players competing against each other to be the First one out of the woods, and the last player left in the forest will be eaten by wolves. It's also from a book that was written in collaboration with R.J. Berg, the writer behind the Alice series. So the stories include featured Bluebeard, Cinderella, Rapunzel, Jack and the Beanstalk, Three Little Pigs, Red Riding Hood, Little Mermaid, Snow White, Hansel and Gretel, and the Pied Piper. And uh, one to grow on. I. It looks good. It, it's the same kind of visual feel that you'd expect from from American McGee and from from the kind of stylized thing that if you play the games before, you could you could enjoy it. Sometimes we like to bring you Kickstarters uh, because they've they've got a time limit. This one has got 24 days to go as of this recording. So by the time this comes out tomorrow, 23 days, still have plenty of time to get in on it. It is not funded yet. The goal is one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, but it has broken past the $100,000 mark. Mm -hmm. So it seems likely that this could happen. And and with the name cred, I I could think that that would be easy enough for them to do. So if yeah. you, you back it now, <clears throat> there still seems to be a little bit of, uh, yeah, pledge $25 or more, you get the game deck. 55 or more, you get the illustrated book. If you want the game and the book, it's $75. And then there's bundles beyond that for the, the higher end stuff. But going up to $5,000 for the Royal Collector Bundle. But every once in a while, they open up some extra things uh, once they get past the initial funding mark. Yeah, so it's uh, it goes until Friday, August 18th at 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time. It's suitably creepy. It, it, it certainly fits themes what we've seen from this guy before and if you like collectible card games or illustrated art books about horrific fairy tales then this could be for you yeah the packaging is actually super badass looking and um i may buy it just for the packaging because i know i'll probably never play it yeah i've got friends that i we do game nights and stuff and i would I would bring this to it and it would be something we play probably a few times at least, but it's rare that we get the chance to do that. And the, the illustrated book seems probably to me, the cooler part of it, but who knows? Depends on what you're into. Oh, 
I'm I'm impressed that someone has paid the five thousand dollars for the Royal Collector bundle too. By the way, yeah, I mean, if if you're a fan and if you got the cash, I wish I had the cash. Yeah, <laughs> that's if a I had the cash, too, I would do uh, something else with it. Yeah, that's, that's true. I might create my own game. Do something with Levi. I don't know. God, I would I'd probably take Levi. out like a thousand dollars in singles and then just like slap my wife with it. Because you don't get her dirty enough that it is, you want to hit her with really rancid, crappy money. Yep. Idea. Yep. Why don't you just take your credit card and slide it down her butt like a reader? <laughs> she might try to hit me. Yeah. Actually, I know she wouldn't try. She would succeed in hitting me. Yeah, but it'd be like getting hit by a small child, according to you. So <laughs> it's true. She's she's small, but she's scrappy. She's wiry. Yeah, yeah. She knows how to fuck shit up. Yep. Um. All right, let's talk about Salem's Lot. Yeah, this movie could have been half as long. <laughs> probably still just as as good. Uh, let let's let's go back. To, Salem's Lot is based off of a Stephen King novel from I want to say 1975. Maybe I, I don't know. Uh, and they did a TV miniseries, which is basically they played it in two parts over two nights uh, in 1979 on CBS. It has David Soul, who people would know from the original Starsky and Hutch. James Mason as uh, Richard Straker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bonnie Bedelia is in it. That surprised the hell out of me. I haven't seen a lot of her since Die Hard, but she is quite the babe in this. Uh, Julie Cobb is Bonnie Boom Boom Sawyer. A lot of really good character actors in this. Uh, every time someone showed up on the screen, I'm like, holy shit, it's that guy. Oh, it's the flying fat man from, from Dune. Oh, it's Fred Willard from Fernwood Tonight. Uh, just a hugely talented cast in a over three hour movie, if you're not watching it split between two nights, that it sort of becomes torturous because it's just too fucking long in one sitting yeah i don't i don't feel like there was any reason for it to be this long there was a lot of moments in which nothing was happening and um yeah they're, they're just fucking talking everyone's banging each other's girlfriends and wives and shit that's that's like literally all i remember and, and that's one of the more interesting things is at the beginning uh Bonnie Sawyer and her husband, he does delivery stuff. Uh, Cully Sawyer, uh, he does delivery stuff. He does like odd jobs and everything. He She comes home from work where she works for Fred Willard's character, Larry Crockett. I guess Tubbs wasn't available because this is 1979 and Tubbs is black. So <laughs> too soon, man. Too soon. Yeah, too soon for Miami Vice. <laughs> so they... They're married and everything, but she's having an affair with her boss. And she knows that her husband is going out of town to do this pickup and delivery of something. So he's going to be gone all night. So she invites her boss over to have sex in her marital bed because uh, that's a turn on for her. Seems legit. Yeah. But her husband sends somebody else to go get the thing because he knows she's having an affair. So he comes in with a shotgun, catches them in the act. That was an uncomfortable little scene. That was a very uncomfortable scene. So he he takes Fred Willard out in the living room and has him hold the gun up to his face. In the they did a movie of this in Europe that they actually released in theaters that was shorter and had some different scenes and some different takes. So in the actual movie, they had Fred Willard put the gun in his mouth. Uh but it's still he he doesn't actually kill him. But that was like this one scene that Okay, so all of this is going on with with people in the town. They have their own lives, but they don't really do anything with it after that. Nope, you it could just have, sort of disappears. Yeah, you could have taken out all of the horse shit involving them and their lives, and them trying to fuck each other, and just gotten straight to the the vampires. Uh, yeah, by the way, it's a, fine. It's a vampire movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. it's not just a vampire movie because. James Mason is first of all he it's kind of like a little bit of a needful things he he's in this town he's in this old haunted house that uh David Soul comes into town and and 
wants to write a story about. David Soul is a writer in this. Goddamn, a writer in a Stephen King story? You don't fucking say. Uh, he comes in. He, he's drawn back to this house that's in the town that he grew up in because he says it's evil, and it draws evil to it. James Mason's character lives in it right now, is waiting for his partner, uh, quote, unquote, partner, to show up. And they've opened an antique store, which is straight out of Needful Things. There's just so many things. And I don't know a lot about Stephen King's work, but it seems like most of what I know about Stephen King's work is the same shit keeps happening over and over again. Even the part where the two guys are going to get the package for for Straker reminded me of the scene from Creep Show, where they have the 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 big crate and the the evil monkey thing comes out and starts killing people and dragging them back in the crate and the guy cleans up all the blood so he can get his wife to come over there because he wants his wife to get killed by it. He wants to get rid of her. Have you ever seen Creepshow? Uh-uh. I have Oh, man, I'm totally underselling Creepshow. It is such a damn good movie. And it's Stephen King and... I actually Stuart just thought... Creep, I thought Creepshow is what you called your penis. Sometimes. That's closer to a dune worm. <laughs> I just imagine that you walk into your bedroom at night and you're like, hey, you want to see my creep show? <laughs> I say it just like that with the one two <laughs> emphasis. Uh, mm, creep show. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you're making me you pick lint out of your belly button while you do it too? With the penis, yeah. It just reaches up there like an elephant. <laughs> how, how big is your dick that you can de-lint your belly no, button with the it? The question is how big is my belly button that it can fit the whole dick? That's the question. You just turned my whole world upside down, face. Yep. Um, what else? Okay, so if there had been more scenes like the the cheating wife, husband, boss, trio, I would have enjoyed this movie more. Because there's stuff like that. There's stuff with the kids who are doing a play. and um, Also fucking pointless. All pointless. And that's the problem is that there's all of these great character setups and great character actors in this that you think, okay, we, we're getting something that is full and robust and well-rounded because we have three hours to play with, but then they don't follow up on any of it. It's just all of a sudden uh, Mason's partner comes into town and the kids start disappearing and turning into vampires and then turning other people into vampires and so on and so forth and so forth. And we lose all track of story beyond the vampire story. And that's disappointing because all the rest of it seemed like it was relatively interesting and could have at least made it feel like a, a fuller movie that made sense. Otherwise, it's a three-hour movie that could have been an hour and a half. Not only... I kind of... I, I meant to say this and you just kept talking. And I don't mean that in a mean way. But uh, the, like when they showed the kids as vampires with the makeup and stuff i thought it was actually really well done and it was it was successfully creepy looking so you have like two minutes of something really fucking cool and then you go back to 40 minutes of hot dog shit yeah a pointless story and and it just it, it was like it's really hard to maintain an erection when you keep <laughs> taking it away yeah it, it's hard to maintain an erection when you're 46 but that that scene you're talking about the the first time that the kid comes up to his brother's window and he he's scraping at the window from outside and they're not using wires they used a, a crane essentially to get the kid up there so it looks very for for the effects of what their time were that was the best way to make it look realistic and scary mm -hmm. that is the scene that i remember as i was a kid seeing this on TV and getting freaked out and i never got to see the rest of the movie now i probably just fell asleep because it's boring as shit otherwise but that one scene has <laughs> stuck with me for my entire, you know, 40 years since is like, I remember that. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is the scariest movie ever. It's not. It's unfortunately not the scariest movie ever. No, uh, but the it's... Vampire becomes a, a ripoff of Nosferatu because they didn't want to do a Bela Lugosi-ish um, vampire, which makes sense. But they didn't bring us anything new either. Right. And, and at most, it becomes like okay, the whole town fills up the vampires. The themes were, all right, this is actually directed by Toby Hooper, which for, Mother I face. mean, that seems impressive, impressive to get Toby Hooper to do this movie made for TV after doing uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
the person who I think produced it was also kind of a fan of oh shit the guy who did the the shining um god why can't i think of his name i don't really like him but <sighs> fuck i can't think of his name either he did eyes wide shut and everything else i don't Carrie want to probably tell us yeah i i, I don't want to google it but <sighs> we'll just call him phil so phil collins who, kubrick. Who directed shining. yeah kubrick yep <laughs> sorry it, it, because uh, two of the people in this, he he brings those two actors in because they were a couple in a Kubrick movie. Uh, so, which is also kind of weird because we know that Stephen King didn't really like Kubrick's take on The Shining. That's but true. Stephen King really liked this. Up Even the changes the that they had to do to to get it away from the book and, and the stuff they had to do for TV, he didn't mind it. This was, to him, one of the better versions of a of a Stephen King film. At, at that point in time, there hadn't been a lot of them, but it was. I think it still stood up for a long period of time as one of his more favored adaptations of his work. And it's not that it's a bad movie per se. It, it's it's a 1979 film. We're obviously we're a little bit more but, in tune with stuff from today. It's just it's super long. If you treated it like an event, if you saw it in that time period if you saw that over the two nights and you're watching it on tv you would be really impressed that they did this for tv and, th and that's the other thing you got to keep in mind is everything stephen king had that was adapted for tv is three plus hours but it's it, i don't think it was made with the intent to sit down and watch it in one sitting yeah but we expect people to sit down and listen to a matt vincent episode of our show <laughs> i don't whatever i'm yeah. drunk halfway through so i don't care what happens at that point <laughs> it's true and 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 it's usually enjoyable because you're drunk that's, it's a that's lot of true. fun for me. <laughs> just, just trying to keep us all in line. Um, Corey's still trying to line up that interventionist. I, I gave up. I'm pretty sure if I called in a professional, he would just slap me and walk away. <laughs> why? Because it's like, why did you even waste my time? They don't want to change. Look at these guys. <laughs> just like, I'd like, I'd like uh, my time back, sir. I'm, I'm never going to get a three hours of my life back, and now i got to fucking watch Twilight. Um, oh, we still got to do that someday. Speaking of Twilight, this is still a better love story then. <laughs> the story is a better love story. It's 400% more, more rape references than Twilight. So I just want to mention this real fast because I wasn't there for a lot of it, but in the midst of trying to save my wife's wife yesterday... She save, also did you say save your wife's wife. Yes. What the hell you got going on over there in that tiny little house? She's got to get satisfaction from somewhere. Also, I'm sick of cleaning. Does your wife's <laughs> wife wear the accommodator? No, she wears the instigator. Do, uh, wait, do you know just, what the accommodator is? Shit. I know what the accommodator is. <laughs> I, I unfortunately know what the accommodator is, not what the accommodator can do. So. <laughs> In the midst of my wife cooking dinner that was going to poison her and me stopping her from doing that, she had turned on to my my Plex to watch Salem's Lot. She accidentally, without paying attention, had started the sequel, Return to Salem's Lot, that was on TV in 1987. I did not know that there was a sequel. There is a sequel. It has nothing to do with this movie. It does have the dude from The Stuff in it. Uh, but, but the sequel, I don't know if it was necessarily made for television because the sequel definitely has swearing and definitely has nudity. Uh, so right off the bat, and I think it's also shorter, wins over this movie in those three categories. But it's not good. It, it's filmed in such a way that it looks akin to watching an episode of Goosebumps. Yeah, you used to love that show. Calm down. Yeah, I know. Or Are You Afraid of the Dark? It's just, it's I just, pretty I love that show too. Yep. If it's if it's hot garbage shit TV, chances are I watch it. Yeah. Um, but this is not that movie. This is this movie. And and in all respects, I I I can't point at it and say that there were a lot of bad things about it. it it's it sort of reminds me a little bit of because of the town the way that it is, it reminds me a little bit of Twin Peaks, because it's that town where it seems like everything should be okay and everybody gets along, but then there's this undercurrent of darkness to it and then it starts 
peering out and becoming more prevalent in the town. Mm. Uh, but in this case, it's all brought back to vampires. But the vampires are only a part of it because Ben Mears, the, the main character, comes back to the town because the house itself, he says, draws the evil. In this case, the evil that it drew is this pair of vampires. But in other times, it was something else. And I think in that regard, Salem's Lot could be very interesting. They didn't do that for the follow-up. The follow-up is towns full of vampires. Um, they they probably could have done more, but I guess they were trying to okay. establish that it's a continuation from this. This is one of those things where you could do a Halloween 3 and it would be okay. It's like you keep coming back, but it's the town that's cursed and it's the different curses that you see. Another thing about this movie is that a lot of things have stolen from it. Um, respectfully, Fright Night, uh, which was an 80s vampire movie, very popular yep. one, and it had a remake not too long ago. That was actually pretty good. Fright Night steals a lot from this movie. The house, the way that it looks and is set up, is similar to Fright Night. The uh, scene of the guy getting impaled on the deer horns they did in Lost Boys. Lost Boys takes a lot from this movie as well. The floating kid outside the window taken from Lost Boys. A lot of those things owe to Salem's Lot. And it makes sense when you watch it. It's just, but that's part of the problem of seeing it in 2017 is if you've seen these other things, you're going to see the references and think about those other more relevant movies to your own life than something that took place this long ago. It's the it's the John Carter of Mars effect of you can't do a John Carter movie now because everything that made John Carter great has been ripped off by other movies and you saw those other movies first and now John Carter looks like it's copying them even though it was the original. That, yeah, it's like a fucked up Catch-22 when stuff like that happens though. Yeah, and, and at least this got made and at least... It, it, it is beloved. There's a, a DVD or a Blu-ray that's just coming out that I think has this and three other Stephen King horror movies on it. And I expect that there might be some references to this maybe in The Dark Tower since they're referencing so many other things. I also saw that Christine was referenced in the Ready Player One movie. Uh, they show Christine, they show Freddy Krueger, and they show the Iron Giant. Watched that Ready Player One trailer and proceeded to masturbate for 45 minutes. So, nine times? Well, you got that refractory period. Yeah. So, nine times and 20 naps. I took 27 35 second naps. Uh, Any more? Not enough. Any less? Not enough. It takes me that long to set up my breathing machine. Never get old and fat. Well, I'm talking to you. Never get old. <laughs> well on my way to both of those. <laughs> As I drink another beer. <sighs> oh. Man, I, I wanted I wanted to enjoy this movie. Yeah, me too. More. I, oh, I, yeah, me the, too. There's so many great little things that are a part of this that it deserves to be. <laughs> and and people like this movie. This is not the first time you've seen this, correct? No, it is the first time that I've seen the whole thing. And it's yeah. the first time I've seen any of it since 1979. Okay. So this is the first time I've watched this movie. Yeah. And it's just too long. Oh, fuck yeah. It's way too long. <clears throat> I um, When a movie is so long that I have to plan my day around watching it, like, you need to calm your tits, Stephen King. <laughs> But, but, to his defense, as I mentioned earlier, all of his stuff was that long. You know, The Langoliers is three hours. The Stand is six hours. Those are both great, great movies. But did this start that? Is it is it because Stephen King is such a a a, a big writer? Because all this stuff is is super long. They're they're not short books. Or is it because? You know, The Shining comes out and this comes out and they're like, yeah, we, we are making Stephen King epic film. And it's like, well, maybe treat it like a good film. They changed enough from the book that they knew the cuts and things that they had to make. And they did release this as a shorter film in Europe. So there's the opportunity for that. But how much did they cut out and what parts did they cut out? And did it make it better or did it make it worse? Right. I guess the fact that we don't see that version 
very often means that people expect that this was the better one. I just, I don't know that it was. There's just so much back, there's so much unneeded backstory. That, it's that, season two of Twin Peaks. It's, it's like... I, I didn't, I never got to start season two. Um, season two's tough. Uh, Jack was very kind to it when we when we talked about it. Yeah, but but there's there's so many things. It, season two is all about the different characters in the town because they reveal the killer very early on in the in the second season. They were forced to by the by the uh, by ABC essentially by the broadcast company, mm -hmm. and so once they do that, they didn't have a story that they could instantly jump into. So it's a lot of side stories about characters like James and nobody likes James and Donna uh, or, or about Lucy and Andy, the, the deputy and the, the girl who works at the sheriff's station. It's all these other characters who get their stories, which is all cool in the background of the story of who killed Laura Palmer. But when there's not that giant mystery, it's harder to feign interest in the bullshit rhetoric of these other people's lives. And that's why, at the beginning of this, the bullshit rhetoric of these people I w thought was cool because it's a sidestep from the stuff with the vampire story. But then it goes just purely vampire story, and the vampire story goes too long. If it was a mix of things, then I would at least have, like, back and forth. Yeah. So this would actually make mm -hmm. a really good, like, 10-episode series for Stranger Things type of thing on uh, on Netflix. More than it does as a two-night opus on on a broadcast thing on tv i wonder if they'll take this and, and make it into a like a six or eight episode tv show well they did a remake of this with rob lowe because rob lowe started doing a bunch of stephen king oh ABC yeah stuff. i forgot about that yeah they did a remake of this and i think it was also a two-night event um <clears throat> That would have been an opportunity to do a big thing. But that was also still not a point in time where TV was getting away with that. Right now, I could ab absolutely see an American Horror Story type situation where we do seasons of stuff. Or that that new Stephen, Stephen King's got a couple of things in development, but he's got that one that we talked about that's coming to Hulu in a, a couple of months. That, yeah, if they did a season that was basically Salem's Lot, Sure, or if the thing takes place in Salem's Lot, I guess that would make sense as well. But the, yeah, I, I would definitely say that this would be something that we could do that with. But right now, people are kind of expecting that epic to be what they're doing with the Dark Tower. Right. With movie, TV series, then movie, then another TV series, and so on. Maybe. So Stephen King's getting the best deal he can. Uh, I think one that includes him even getting the cameo, which is nice. But he in in all of his in uh, all of his TV movies, he was always in them. Yeah, I didn't. He, not in this one, obviously. Yeah, I didn't see him in this one, but he he certainly as he showed up in um, Maximum Overdrive. But that's the one he actually directed. Uh, he shows up in Creep Show. One of the one of the segments of Creep Show because it's an anthology is completely about him but not as himself, but he's a character in it. He's terrific. This is another reason why you have to see Creepshow. Because uh, that whole Stephen King segment is so awesome, and he is so good in it, and he deserved to be like someone that you see in more stuff as yeah. an actor, which is hilarious, because I don't think I knew that it was him for a good number of years. Um, the other part of it is that vampire stuff is sort of played out mm -hmm. you know it, it's it, it's like you were worried about a zombie show coming out because we've got enough zombie stuff already another vampire thing right now i think it's at a point where vampires are not terribly interesting uh which is why it's tough that universal is doing all this stuff to try to make their new universal monster franchise happen because they couldn't make a dracula film with dracula and told work about a year before it it bombed. It was supposed to be a start of this. So now they do the mummy thing with Tom Cruise. It frankly bombed. And they're already pushing to get Channing Tatum in line to play Van Helsing. And we know that a Van Helsing film didn't work when Hugh Jackman tried it 10 years ago. Didn't they do some... Oh, that was I Frankenstein. Never mind. Yeah, and there's there's supposed to be Frankenstein one. There's all these things that are supposed to be happening. And it's just... I don't know that this is the right time for it. Because we've had... We've had our fill. 
You know, it, it's going to take somebody to do something very different. And and Twilight, for as much as I like to shit on it, because it kind of deserves to be shit on, at least it was different from what people were seeing from vampires for a long period of time. Yeah. And and Anne Rice has an interview with the Vampire Show that's coming out. So that we've had the, the Vampire Diaries and the original spinoff of the Vampire Diaries. We've had True Blood, that new show from uh, Harris... That's that's got vampires and were creatures and all this stuff is starting tonight on NBC, which is again just like more true blood. So I don't think that there's any shortage of this type of thing. That Stephen King's better off if they do a mini series about Christine and we have a car that kills people than we are seeing Salem's Lot come back. As much as I think Salem's Lot is a, the better story, maybe it's not right to try to redo it at any point soon in the near future i feel like bits and pieces of salem lot salem's lots story could make the whole better does that make sense like just take the vampire portion of this and go for that i don't know i don't know it's if you take it out then that's fright night and that's that's kind of where that's kind of why i stopped talking I mean, it's like but, if, you if you take out the things that make uh, Salem's Lot super fucking long and kind of boring, then it's just it's something else. Yeah, which is not to say that Fright Night's not great because Fright Night is absolutely great. It's okay. It, it it was very good at the time. It it was a very impressive movie and okay. and it's fun to watch. And it's got Marcy from Married with Children in it. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I've said my piece. Yeah, when I watch things like Pet Cemetery, there's the whole story with the guy who's dead who keeps trying to talk to the dad and trying to convince him not to, not to bring his kid back to life, and he tries to yell at the wife to not go into the house when the kids in there killing people and everything. I'm, I'm interested in the weird outer stories on Stephen King stuff often more than I am the, the the main story. Well, this was one of his first... That's not one of his first books, is it? It's still early for him. I mean, it's before we see him get to his real stride when people saw him as the master of horror. Right. Point being is the shit didn't get weird until later. I, I think it just didn't get weird enough. I, I would have appreciated it. didn't get as weird, weird as we're used to it being. Is that yeah? Is that better? Okay. No, absolutely. It's 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 ramen packets versus like actual ramen that you get from a ramen restaurant. It, I it's, get that it's reference because like, I'm fat. It, it's all it's all the taste and everything that you expect to be there, but it's not all the special shit that makes it really good and amazing. It, it's yeah. just not enough ingredients. It's just a very basic, bland kind of meal. You can live off of it, but it tastes like shit. I'm trying to find his biblioteca. Um, Salem's Lot was the second book. Carrie was the first. Shining was the third. Which is kind of impressive. Well, Carrie and Salem's Lot are like kind of straight up horror movies. The Shining as well. The Stand was his fourth one. That's for stuff starting to get weird. Just That's when he started weird. doing epic fantasy as horror. Which yeah. is... Cool, and that that's in his wheelhouse. But it's also when he's like, "Yeah, I can write three thousand pages, and people just fucking read it at this point." Uh, or, or maybe it was still a chance right then. Maybe it, it was not quite there yet. But Carrie, I think, works best out of those examples because it's a straightforward story, and it doesn't try to be bigger than what it is. But it is still full and rich, and the characters are well developed. And I, I'm mostly comparing it from the movie. I think the movie was really well done. But you you get everything that you need and it feels real and it, it kind of, you feel empathy for the character and at the same time you feel that, that tug of like, I want revenge too. And all that makes sense. And in this, I don't know that there's a character that I really identified with in this. It, the the kid who's, who's the horror movie fan who winds up... Uh, being friends with Mirrors and is the first one to sort of try to beat back the vampires when his friends start showing up and trying to bite him. 
I guess he was maybe supposed to be our entry point, or maybe Mirrors himself was supposed to be the entry point, but neither of them did enough to be that for me. Who were you supposed to identify with? Or was it just that you were supposed to experience fear of vampires? Maybe. I don't know. That that's that's I think part of what we're missing in this too. And I mean I'm Toby not... Hooper had just done Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't have a lot of people that you identify with either. Mm -mm. All those kids were annoying and you wanted to see them get fucking hacked to bits. Mm -hmm. Including the one guy that you're supposed to feel bad for because he's in the wheelchair and it's like, oh, I just can't help it. Well, yeah, but he's still a dick. You know, I just don't like the guy. You know, just fucking take him down a peg. Just just eat a little bit of him. Just eat a little bit of him, Leatherface. You can do that. It's all right. Hey, Corey. Just, just, just nip. You're getting a little bent out of shape there, buddy. Yeah. Just, just, what? just Let's calm it down. Let's calm it down. Let's cool it off. And let's go to the Fab Cave. Um, I really put a lot of thought into that one. <laughs> lost, lost it there. Um, I want you to sing Fab Cave every time. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the Fab Cave. Let's hit some high notes. I hit high notes, but it's kind of late here. My wife's in bed. I don't want to wake up the dogs. That's a whole thing. Uh, and more. it's obviously it's it's after dark, so it's past her curfew because she's ten. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, anyone under the age of sixteen has got to be home by dark. So we all know she's home because it's dark out. It makes me sound like a pedophile. My <laughs> wife, my my wife is she's she's at least thirty years old. I it's swear, really convincing though. Some there are some times when I'm joking with her about how young she looks, and I wonder if she's just been lying to me for ten years. So since she was six. <laughs> God damn it, Corey. <laughs> You're not helping. Well, oh man, I've, so, I've broken so many laws if she's under the age of 18. <sighs> Worth it. Uh, so, <laughs> just, uh, all if right, you're so, not familiar with our FAP scale, because it's just going to get better if we go right from that conversation to, hey, we rate things by comparing the masturbation. Uh, it's based off of three criteria. Feature attention and panic like a <sighs> child tied up in your basement is... she's in our bed she's not tied up in the basement where's your bed down the hall down the basement till next there. week next week is in the basement yeah. so going <laughs> go ahead fuck yeah whatever you know, okay so for... features the first one <laughs> I'm so tired and kind of drunk. Um, features the story. Was it interesting? How was the acting? Corey, zero to five. Man, I the actors in this were so good. The acting was just okay. It was not their best work for any of them. Uh, they were they were far better than what this script required of them, I think. Uh, but they all they all brought the goods. The story, <laughs> the unfortunately. Goods was was middling to mediocre so i i can't go higher than a, a 1.5 oh uh, that's pretty i mean i i give it a two mostly because if 2.5 is mediocre um i'm reading the comments in the chat and it's throwing me off um the story wasn't terribly great the acting was very mediocre the story the vampire's portion of the story was good. The everything else sucked, so I just kind of level it off to a two. You know, I'm going to match you in the two because, again, I have to keep in mind this came out in '79 before I'd yes. seen movies like Lost Boys and Fright Night, and and that steals away in a way that's not really fair to this film. I'll give you that. Um, next up, we have the attention. This is going to be a rewatchability. Uh, would you purchase it? Would you recommend it to your friends, Corey? Oh, I, the only reason I'm going to say two is because for 30 plus years, that goddamn scene at the bedroom window has stuck with me. Uh, otherwise, and that that's why that that's why I wanted to watch it again. That's why I thought it was going to be great. It, it's a lot to put on that one scene and the rest of it. It's OK, but you really have to be in the right mood. And you really have to want to watch it because it is 
long and it is not something that gets better as it goes along. It gets gradually dull. <laughs> you said four, right? I said two. Oh, two. Oh, Jesus. I'm not giving it a four. Fuck that. See, I gave it a four. You gave it a four on attention? Um, yeah, I really gave it a ton of points based on the fact that it came out in the late 70s and how creepy the kids as vampires looked. I also thought it was kind of neat. I mean, given given the time, there wasn't a ton of violence in movies. So when the kids bit the necks, um, it just like zoomed in on them and stopped. Like I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, I can I can I can give up to it too, but I can't go past that. I just I can't. Well, I've already said I've given it a four. I'm too lazy to go in there and change it. So it's staying with a four. <laughs> if only Google Docs were editable, why do you have to get white out but on I the don't... internet? I want to change my mind. You want to of... lift your hand from your crotch. I understand how it is. Oh, hand check. Uh, the last one we have is panic. It's going to be your scariness. How are the effects? Uh, were you surprised? Oh, shit. That's what I should have waited for the last one on. Did you put well, I'm not going to change it now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, I'm gonna give it a three. I'm going to give it a three because it actually, like I said, it was scary in that regard. The design for the head vampire was certainly based off of Nosferatu. Looks great in the poster. Looks okay in the movie. Yeah, the the stills um, when when looking for pictures to post for the sh- the the show page, all the stills look fucking terrible. Um, yeah, but you know everything, all the promotional stuff. They looks really good. <clears throat> I give it a I, I give it a two. I mean. Um, just kind of remember the the vampire movie that Dave made us watch that was also made for TV. Which one? I don't recall. Grave, it was Grave of the Vampire. Yeah. Oh shit. It could have just been fucking dog shit, and I would have enjoyed it more. Yeah. That thing. The fact that that thing existed means that this automatically has to land over a two on every category. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Fucking Dave. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to be on your network, Dave. <sighs> I know and that's why it's like I can't really say anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dave Nelson is a sweetheart. Good old Dave my Nelson. Dad. My dad. I miss my dad. Dad got a job. He's never home. I don't have a weekend dad anymore. He went out for cigarettes and then all of a sudden he was in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's where you get new ports. Uh, that's awesome. You can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at 805 328 3966. Email us at potedgyandcast.com or you can leave the show a message on our website. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and the Instagrams at Podcast Air. And you can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any of your favorite podcatchers. Uh, you can leave us feedback. Please leave us feedback. I want to read your feedback on the internet in whatever voice I think you might sound like. Um, people don't leave us feedback. It makes me sad. I check literally every day because I'm a lonely, lonely old man. My computer did an update of iTunes today, and I just cursed endlessly that I had to install it to be able to rate some of my favorite podcasts. It's worth it to rate them, uh, which means you could you could do the same for us. But I understand if if uh, if iTunes is a bane on your existence, go to. Go to, go to Google Play and rate us. I don't know. <laughs> you can, you can I do guess that from your browser. You don't have to install shit. Yeah. All right. You start reading this. I'm going to go on Google Play, and I'm going to see if anyone rated us on Google Play. No, I'm sure no one's rated us on Google Play. Who well, the fuck I'm sure they Google haven't Play? either, but we're going to give people the benefit of the doubt that someone out there, Podcast of Terror, I don't even know how to use Google Play. I can't but, you know, it's... Just just as easy as is what you already said. You can email us at pot at gncast.com uh, or you can leave us a voicemail. We've never gotten a voicemail for the show. And I feel like even if it was just heavy breathing and it could be just someone having an asthma attack, it could be me. It could be me. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's someone who meant to call 911, accidentally called our voicemail number, left a voicemail. What a horrible misdial. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you go from 911 to an 805 number, but. Um, it's just Dave in Canada just sucking on those fucking <laughs> menthol cigarettes. Just <sighs> <sighs> Mon ami. I assume that he's in. 
<laughs> just eating poutine, drinking wine, and going, mon ami. Yeah. Well, that's the only French word I know. Oh, wee yep. wee. Uh, wee, French, wee. French fries. That's probably French. Uh, surrender. Oh, wait. No, that's a rude. <laughs> um. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, man. How do I find podcasts on Google Play? We can't end this until I find out if no, anyone it. left us. God I, damn it. Uh, in the meanwhile, all subscription options. These are your options, people. This is all you have. Uh, you can you can find them at gncast.com slash subscribe. And you can also join our Facebook page under the Galactic Network or Podcast of Terror has its own Facebook page as well. Uh, we, we love to, to have you guys be a part of the things that we do, hang out with us, uh, chill make fun of us it's okay you know we're fat hipsters <laughs> <laughs> fucking all right all right i re- i got to i got to point this one out cuz i so growly in the chat just uh, man i cannot i cannot appreciate this enough it just says do it do small do it slowly <laughs> and that's from do you know what movie that's from no true lies Oh god! When fucking Arnold is sitting in the chair and, and he's uh, got the the Jamie recorder Curtis, and he's yep, she's doing dancing all sexy and she's got her tiggle bitties out. <laughs> Man, if I knew she wasn't born with a dick, I'd do her. You would, first of all, the dick is not the the game changer for you it's at cool. all. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. I still and it's Jamie Lee about. Curtis. You 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 aspire. <laughs> that's never but oh uh, i finally found it on google you gotta go to google play music yes Not just google play how do i see if no one ever fucking reviewed us hmm. i don't know man how do i use the internet <laughs> Well, first of all, it's a series of tubes. So what you have to do is stick your dick huh. in it. And then the pressure will just build up. <laughs> and it'll blow your asshole out. If you don't know how to use something, just put your dick in it. Yep. That explains why we're both IT. Yeah, right. Oh, your computer doesn't work? Let me just put my dick in it. <laughs> my Commodore 64 had a joystick port. That was the good old days. I knew exactly what it was doing. And then it made it in and out, in and out. And it totally screwed everything up. Can I put my dick in it? I don't know how to use Google Play. Oh, no. Someone tell me how to use Google Play. Anyways, that's going to do it for another episode of the Podcast Today. We will talk to you guys next week. Are ghosts or Bigfoot real? Whatever happened to all that stuff that went missing in the Bermuda Triangle? Did the U.S. government experiment with time travel? Is there a secret society really running the world? Hell, if we know but you're guaranteed to hear us try to figure it out on the Weird World Weekly podcast. If it's the paranormal, conspiratorial, mythological, unexplained, or anything else strange, we talk about it. Find us on your favorite podcast app or by going to gncasts.com slash weird. That's g-n-c-a-s-t-s dot com slash weird. Next week we will be watching Jaws with our boy Jack Bacone that we spent 10 minutes talking about earlier. Any doodles. Uh, Jack may be bringing a friend. Who knows? But uh, that'll do it for this week. Uh, another episode of the podcast here. We'll talk to you guys next week. Stay scary, everybody. Bye. This has been a Galactic Network podcast. For more, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com.